guys welcome back to my channel thank you guys those of you who are always watching always liking and sharing your thoughts I truly appreciate you now today we are going to be looking at verb tenses verb tenses and by verb tenses I mean present tense past tense present and past participles and future tense. However, we have already looked at the present tense. So when we looked at subject verb agreement and we were looking at come and comes, the verb with the S, the verb without the S, those were all in the present tense. We also looked at present tense um, when it comes to auxiliary verb, remember when we did is and are, we said those are present tense. So we are going to be looking at main verbs today and we are going to look at the past tense form. Now past tense refers to an action that already happened. It happened in the past. Now there are several ways in which we can form past tenses of verbs. Today, we're going to look at some of them, and then in our next lesson, we'll look at others. The ones we're going to be looking at today are those that we add ed to. However, there are different words that we will add ed to, and some we will not just add ed, but ed is included. All right, so let's get going. So here I have a chart and it shows four different ways, one, two, three, four different ways in which verb form their past tense. So the first one says by adding ed at the end of the verb. Now for some verbs, we simply just add ed and that's it. And most verbs form their past tense by adding ed. So example, the word walk. We just rewrite the word walk and add ed, and that's the past tense. So walk is the main verb. It's in the present tense. And then walked is in the past tense. Repeat, to make it past tense, we simply write the word repeat, then add ed. So that's the simplest form, by just adding ed to the end of the word. Number two, says by dropping e when the verb ends with one e and then we add ed so for some verbs the last letter is an e it ends with a single e we know that some words end with two e's but we're talking about verbs that end with just one e in that case we remove the e we drop it and then we add ed. You might say, so why do they remove the e and then add ed? It is taught that way so that we don't forget to remove that e and then add ed and we have two e's. So in the case of decide, it ends with a single e. All we do, write back d-e-c-i-d, -E remove the e, remove that e, and then we add ed. All right, number three. By changing y to i, then add ed when the verb ends with y. If you remember when we looked at making nouns plural, we were doing something like this, removing the y, then add i, e, s. However, today, because it's past tense and it's the verb, we're changing the y to i, then we're adding e, d. Example, the word study. It ends with a y. So we change the y to i, then we add e, d. The word try. Change the y to i, then add e, d. Simple. So we just have to remember the rules. Then number four is where it kind of gets a little tricky. So pay keen attention. We form the past tense of some verbs by 
doubling the last letter of the verb, then add ed. But when do we do this? When the verb has one syllable that ends with a consonant plus vowel plus consonant. But let me break that down because it sounds like it's a lot. So when a verb has only one syllable and syllables are the sounds, the different sounds we get when we pronounce a word, how many parts we can break that word in. So like the word clap, that's one syllable, clap. The word jump, jump, one syllable. But let us think about a word like prefer, that's two syllables. Study, that's two syllables. So we're talking about words that only have one syllable, but pay attention to this part. It ends with a consonant, then a vowel, then a consonant. So we're going to look at the three last letters in the word. And I'm assuming that we know what vowels and consonants are, but let me break it down. So our alphabet is made up of 26 letters. Five of them are vowels. Y is sometimes regarded as a vowel and the others are all consonants. So A, E, I, O, U and sometimes Y, those are the vowels. Then the other letters are the consonants. So in a case like this, we have to look at the last three letters of a one syllable word. If it goes consonant, vowel, then consonant, chances are we need to double that last letter. Remember, there are exceptions to every rule. So let us go. This word is stop. What are the three last letters? T, O, and P. Let's see if it goes consonant, vowel, consonant. So T is a consonant, O is a vowel, and P is a consonant. So of course it goes consonant, then vowel, then consonant. In this case, we are going to double the P. So S-T-O-P, we write that back. Because we're doubling the P, we write another P, then we add E-D. And let us look at rip. Rip is a single syllable word, one syllable. It only has three letters. So let's see if it follows the rule consonant, vowel, consonant. So R is a consonant, I is a vowel, and P is also a consonant. So of course it follows that rule. In this case, we are doubling the P. It means we're going to write back R-I-P, because we're doubling the P, we write another P, then we add E, D. Now, some words that are not single syllable words, meaning they're multi-syllables, they have two or more syllables, they form their past tense by also doubling the last letter and adding E, D. But there is also a rule. It says, when the final syllable is stressed in a multi-syllable word, we double the, the last letter, then add ed. So if the word has more than one syllable, but we stress the last syllable. For example, the word prefer. How many syllables do you hear? Two. Did we stress that last syllable? Matter of fact, what's the last syllable? It is fur. Did we stress it? Yes, we did. We said prefer. So yes, we stress that last syllable. And again, we have consonant, vowel, consonant. In this case, we're doubling the last letter, which is the R. So we write back prefer, write our R because we're doubling and then add E, D. Now, it takes practice, boys and girls. So, as I always tell you, you can take a picture of my chart and practice. Study those rules until you learn them. 
practice different words and see how it works for you now any word that ends with a y or a w even if it follows these two word rules we are not doubling the w and the y so normally we don't double the w and the y all right let's move on so now we are going to look at some sentences and see if we can figure out what rule the verbs are following and how we should make them past tense. So the first one says, Kim want very much to go to school. We're going to make the verb want into the past tense. In this case, we are simply adding an ED. So want is one of those words or one of those verbs where we simply add an ed. So it's read, Kim wanted very much to go to school. Next sentence. The residents describe the robber to the police. Again, the verb is describe. What rule do you remember? Look at the word describe. It ends with an E. What does the rule say when the verb ends with a single E? It says, shout it out, we need to remove that E, then add ED. Remember I'm saying, why do we need to remove the E and then add an E? So it now becomes D-E-S-C-R-I-B. We remove that E and then add E, D. So the residents described the robber to the police, past tense. All right, number three. In the first year of high school, Bill occupy a desk in the front row. Look at the verb, it's occupy. What rule do you remember from the chart? The word occupy ends with Y. What did it say where to do with the Y again? Change it to I, then add E, D. Good job. So occupy becomes O, C, C, U, P. We're changing the Y to I, then add E, D. Now, I want you to talk with me for number four and five. Talk along with me. Don't let me do it all by myself. Help me. Let's go. So you're reading the sentence with me and you're helping to talk about the rule and to find the answer. Number four. Until she got arthritis, grandma knits sweaters for Judith and her baby brother. So the verb is knit. Knit is a single syllable word, meaning it only has one syllable, one sound you get when you say the word knit. Okay, now when it's a single syllable word, say the rule. We look to see if it has consonant vowel consonant the last three letters look to see if it's a consonant vowel consonant pattern at the end yes it has that pattern what do we do when it has that pattern we double the last letter uh -huh. so knit becomes k n i t double the last letter which is t then add e D. So, until she got arthritis, grandma knitted sweaters for Judith and her baby brother. Hmm. Number five. Let's go again. The police eventually locate the parents of the lost child. What's the verb? The verb is locate. Good job. What do you notice about the word locate? 
based on the rules. Did you say it ends with E? Yes, it ends with a single E. When it ends with an, a single E, what do we do? Yes, so we remove that E and then add ED. So it becomes L O C A T E D, located. The police eventually located the parents of the lost child. Good job. Now, you know the rules, so don't behave as if you don't because it is your time. Number six and a seven. Let's go. All right. Until recently, most children travel to school on foot. Seven, he satisfied his curiosity by digging up the seeds. Two minutes. Let's go. Two minutes. Let's go. Two minutes. All right. Pause the video and put your answers. Think about the rules that you have just learned and then choose the best answer. Then come back to the video and see if you got them correct. So, until recently, most children travel. Now, let me explain something to you. The English language is very tricky. I keep saying that. And the different parts of the world view it differently. So, my friends in the U.S., when we write traveled, we don't double the L. However, my friends in England and Jamaica, we double the L. So, travel and cancel, we look at it or we spell it differently when we're writing the past tense or when we're adding ing based on where we live. So, yes. If you're living in America and you're going to an American school, you are not doubling the L. If you're living in England, if you're living in Jamaica, you are doubling the L. So please don't go to school and tell your teacher, oh, Miss Harrison said I need to double the L, or Miss Harrison said no, I don't need to, depending on where you live. So it follows the rule, consonant, vowel, consonant. So, for the British people or the Jamaican people, you would use that rule and double the L. Then add your E, D. However, for my American people, you do not double the L even though it follows that rule. So, you would write T-R-A-V-E-L-E-D. As I said again, if you're in America, it's correct. Do not double. If you're in Jamaica, if you're in England, this is yours. Double. All right? English language for you. Let's go to seven. So, if you had double the L, even if you're in America, because of the rule, I understand. I give it to you, but now you know. Seven. He satisfied his curiosity by digging up the seeds the verb is satisfy easy it ends with y when it ends with y we change it to i then add e d so it becomes satisfied f i e d very easy it's all about learning and remembering the rules so i hope you screenshot or you took a picture of the chart and you keep it and practice those rules you cannot go wrong all right we have come to the end of another lesson thanks for joining thanks for watching remember if you like it give it a thumbs up leave a comment and share it with your families and friends thank you